Meeting to order, please rise and join us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. It's always nice when there's like six months a year when we meet and it actually is still light outside, so I do appreciate that. Um, I also appreciate everybody coming this evening. We'll go ahead and jump right in. Uh, the first item is the call roll. Trustee Geyer. Here. Trustee Sperling. Here. Trustee Bauman. Here. Trustee Youngerman. Trustee Marisek. Here. Trustee Berzaska. Here. Did he announce that he was going to be absent or? He's kidding. <laughs> I think we all caught uh, that note. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I'm just trying to get organized here. Sorry to meet it too fast. All right. Uh, so the, the first item is public pro uh, proclamations. Uh, the first one it, that I'll do is the Arbor Day proclamation, and then I'll entertain a motion for approval. Uh, whereas in 1872, the Nebraska Board of Agriculture established a special day uh, to be set aside for planting of trees. And this holiday, called Arbor Day, was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska. And Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world. And whereas trees can reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, lowering heat, heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce oxygen, and provide habitat for wildlife. And whereas trees are a renewable resource, giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other wood products. And whereas trees in our village increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of the business areas, and beautify our community. Uh, and whereas trees, wherever they are planted, uh, are a source of joy and spiritual renewal. Further, I urge all citizens to plant trees to promote the well-being of our community uh, for future generations. Now, therefore, as village president of the village of Montgomery, I do hereby proclaim April 27th, 2024, as Arbor Day in the village of Montgomery. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Yep. Aye. Aye. All right. And that carries, and I'll hand this down to Ben. While I'm doing that, if you can announce uh, what we plan on doing this weekend. I'll be sure. So we are having an Arbor Day celebration on Saturday at 10 a.m. Um, if anybody would like to come, they are, they are doing a coloring contest um, for ages three, four, and five. Um, they can drop those posters off there, and they'll be judged there. Um, also, they are giving away 50 saplings of a redbud tree, so the first 50 people will get a ticket for a sampling. Um, so hopefully we'll see people out there at 10 o'clock and no rain. Awesome. That's right, yeah, last year it was a little cold. All right, All right uh, moving on, the next one we have is Municipal Clerks uh, Week, May 5th through May 11th. I'll read the proclamation, entertain a motion for approval. Uh, whereas the, and this is a proclamation for Municipal Clerks Week, May 5th through May 11th of 2024. Whereas the office of the municipal clerk is a time honored and vital part of local government that, is ex that exists in countries throughout the world. And the office of the municipal clerk is the oldest among public servants. Whereas the office of the municipal clerk provides the professional link between the citizens, the local government bodies, and agencies of government at all levels. And whereas municipal clerks have pledged to be ever mindful of their neutrality and impartiality, rendering equal service to all. And whereas the municipal clerk serves as the information center on functions of local government and community, and whereas municipal clerks continually strive to improve the administration of the affairs of the office of the municipal clerk through participation in educational programs, seminars, workshops, and the annual meetings of their state, province, county, and international professional organizations. And whereas it is most appropriate that we recognize the accomplishments of the office of the municipal clerk. And now therefore, as village president of the village of Montgomery, I do hereby proclaim May 5th through May 11th of 2024 as Municipal Clerks Week in the village of Montgomery and further extend appreciation to our village clerk, Debbie Buchanan, and to all municipal clerks for the vital services they perform and their exemplary dedication to the communities they represent. Motion? So moved. Second. And a thank you to Debbie. Awesome, a motion and a second and a thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right, Debbie, you come up. Over here. Also appreciate you announcing the 
All right, uh, the last proclamation for this evening is Economic Development Week, uh, May 6th through 12th of 2024. Whereas the International Economic Development Council is the largest professional economic development organization dedicated to serving economic developers. And whereas the International Economic Development Council provides leadership and excellence in economic development for communities, members, and partners through conferences, training, courses, advisory services, and research in-depth publications, public policy, advocacy, and in, in initiatives such as the Accredited Economic Development Program and the Certified Economic Developer Designation. And whereas economic developers uh, promote economic well-being and quality of life for their communities by creating, retaining, and expanding jobs that facilitate growth, enhance wealth, and provide a stable tax base. And whereas economic developers stimulate and incubate entrepreneurism in order to help establish the next generation of new businesses, which is the hallmark of the American economy. Uh, whereas economic developers are engaged in a wide variety of settings, including rural and urban, local, state, provincial, and federal <coughs> governments, public-private partnerships, chambers of commerce, universities, and a variety of other institutions. And whereas economic developers attract and retrain high quality jobs, develop vibrant communities, and improve the quality of life in their regions. And whereas economic developers work with the Village of Montgomery within the state of Illinois. Now therefore, as Village President of the Village of Montgomery, I do hereby proclaim May 6th through 10th, 2024, as Economic Development Week in the Village of Montgomery and further extend our appreciation uh, to our Economic Development Manager, Patrick Burke, and Community Development Director Sonia Apt for the vital service they perform in their exemplary dedication to our community. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 There he is. I think it's a packed room. Sorry, and also a thank you to Sonia and Patrick. Sorry, I, I was in the middle of talking. <laughs> I, I didn't mean to disrupt you that much. I just I could hear a little bit. All right, uh, last item for public participation this evening is public comment period. Is this the time for any member of the public to address the board on any topic that's not on the agenda? We have one. If you could just state your name and address and go ahead. Absolutely, my name is Dan. Uh, I live at 502 Wabonzi Circle in Oswego. Um, lived there for about six years now, um, but I'm not here to talk about me. Happy to meet everybody, but tonight's about my father-in-law, he owns George's Family Restaurant up the street here. I don't know if any of you have been. Oh yeah. Um, and uh, he was approached by Patrick actually about the Montgomery Development Fund. Um, <clears throat> kind of thinking of how to bring more people in, um, making sure things are safe for everyone. Um, my father-in-law is very dedicated to keeping his business. Uh, it's been there for nine, about 55 years now. Um, Sorry, I'm really bad at public speaking, so. You're doing a good job. Hang right? in there for yeah, you. Thank you. Um, so he, the 10,000 would be a huge blessing to us. Um, what he plans to do with the money that is given is um, enhance the entranceway. Uh, during the winter months, it can be very slippery, very dangerous. Um, we wanna make sure all our customers are very safe. Um, he's hoping to maybe get a little bit more of a grant if that's allowed. Um, he really wants to build up that entrance way. That way there's more of an entrance. They don't have to go around mm -hmm. the blacktop, which is, can be very dangerous. There's a slight incline there too. Um, so 
Oh, whatever can be given, we would really appreciate it. That's awesome. I appreciate it. I appreciate you coming. You did you. fabulously. Um, also appreciate uh, your dedication to our community. I've been, you know, I'm, I'm one of the newer guys on the block, you might say. I lived down at the end of River Street for, um, I don't know, five years or so when I first got married. And on the weekends, we'd walk down uh, to the restaurant there to eat. And so I know I got family members that still go there every week. So I appreciate what you've, uh, the impact you've made into our community as a uh, as a safe, welcoming place for folks to have, you know, breakfast, whether it's every morning during the week or on the weekends with your family. So, uh, I believe that Sonia can can get you the details uh, for exactly how you fill out the grant. Hopefully, the process uh, you'll find it to be very straightforward. Um, and the com the Montgomery Development Fund Commission committee committee. committee will review the application and should be should be good to go after that. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming. Appreciate it. Awesome, thank you. All right, any other public comment? All right, uh, hearing none, we did have one that was submitted online. Um, that Megan's gonna read uh, for the record, I appreciate it. Okay, um, this was received from Gary Nightingale of Montgomery. He writes, hello, with the arrival of warm weather, I am writing about amplified noise in the village. In 2023, I called the police three times about loud music, very loud music that I could hear from inside my house. I try not to call until after 9 or 10 p.m., hoping that they will stop on their own. Every time I hear the loud music, I try to see where it comes from. It is very difficult given the way the noise reverberates off the houses. The first inci incident was two blocks away, the second was half a mile away, and the third event in October was more than half a mile away. The last two sites had live music. The second incident was in Aurora Township, bordering Montgomery. It took some effort for the 911 operator to understand the location. My point in all of this is to ask what the village is doing to get ahead of the noise violations this year. I ask that the village reinforce our communications to the residents of Montgomery concerning compliance with the noise code. Thank you very much, Gary Nightingale. Awesome, thank you. And uh, will somebody from staff get, get back to Gary? with that comment, just a response to the comment. That'd be great. All right, anything else? All right, move on to the consent agenda. I'll read the items and entertain a motion for approval. We have uh, minutes from April 8th, village board meeting, accounts payable from April 22nd, the refuse report for March of 24, appointment of Lucas Albright to the Historic Preservation Commission, appointment of Mary Beretta to the HPC, reappointment of John Amon to HPC, the reappointment of Brittany Johnson to HPC, and the reappointment of Jason Bragg to the Board of Fire and Police Commissioners. And the last is Ordinance 2076, granting an amendment to the special uses and related variations for uh, 211 North River Street, Gray's Mill Estate, second reading. So moved. Second. I have a correction. That's right, you do. I do. Go ahead. Um, a correction on the meeting minutes on item A. So, under items for separate action, item A from our last meeting was regarding the adoption of the annual budget. <clears throat> there, uh, toward the end of that section, uh, there were there's some comments from things that I had made. Uh, there was a comment that was attributed to Trustee Youngerman, and that was uh, asking if the signage that he has previously talked about was in the budget or if it could be added to the budget. That was something I had asked about and then um, Trustee Youngerman had talked a little bit about an update. So I just wanted to have that corrected that I was the one who asked and then he gave an update. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I know there's been a motion and a second. Um, who made the motion? Yeah, yeah is, can we, have a, can we re motion with those changes? If you're right, comfortable. Second Second, perfect. All right, any any other comments or confusion? Perfect, will you call the roll? Trustee Brzezaska. Yes. Trustee Geyer. Yes. Trustee Sperling. Yes. Trustee Bauman. Yes. Trustee Marisek. Yes. And that carries. Five nothing. All right, uh, going into items for separate action, the first one is 
the ordinance 2077 authorizing and providing for uh, an installment purchase agreement for the purpose of paying the cost of purchasing real or personal property or both uh, in and for the village and authorizing providing the issuance of debt uh, certificates series 2024 aggregate principal amount not to exceed $12.5 million. And this is a waiver of first passage on the second. Director Maluski. Sure. Thank you, President Brawley. So if you recall, with our fiscal year 25 budget presentations, we discussed the need for the village to um, identify a short-term funding mechanism to help us see through that water main projects and the transmission line projects. Uh, so staff met with our debt team, which includes Spear Financial and Chapman and Cutler, our bond council. Uh, we went through and felt that this was the best, this installment would, um, of these debt certificates would be the best mechanism at this point in time. As, we, as those projects progress, it would allow us to have a little more concrete numbers and allow us to build that longer term funding mechanism. So I do have Anthony Maselli here from Spear Financial. Um, so we worked with them at length to issue these short-term uh, debt certificates, but Anthony can come up and tell you about the process that we went through. Great, mm -hmm. thanks Jennifer. Good evening, everybody. Um, so as Jennifer had mentioned, we went through a process to um, identify a bank to issue these debt certificates. And really what this is, is a, is a line of credit. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's being evidenced by a debt certificate because the village is a non-home rule municipality, but it's, this is a, a line of credit to buy us some time with some short-term funding uh, before we do something long-term. Um, and we did a RFP process, which we sent to a large number of banks, local and regional banks. We ended up receiving five bids. Um, they were judged not only on the rate we received, but also the terms. Um, we had a, a myriad of terms uh, offered, in ter uh, including non-usage fees, legal fees, commitment fees, um, some had deposit requirements where they, we had to actually, the village would have to hold money with that bank in order to get the line of credit. So uh, looking through all of those terms plus the rate, we settled on Huntington Bank as the, as the best provider. Um, they actually had the lowest rate and uh, a really clean offering with, with very uh, a low commitment fee, very low legal fees, and no deposit requirements. So. Uh, very favorable uh, offer from Huntington. Current rate um, right now based on the SOFR rate would be a 4.86%. Um, and that'll change monthly, but SOFR's been pretty stable at that, at that uh, I think it's at a 531 as of today. So happy to answer any questions about the process or, or the, uh, the term sheet or, or line of credit. Um, is, this a pay is this repayment every month? Interest? Well, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or no, no I'm sorry. Interest is semi. Interest annual. is semi annual. Yes. Thank you. Jennifer. It would yeah. be May and November. The rate will reset every month. Mm -hmm. Interest is payable semi annually, and then we will repay the principal in two years. Okay. Right. Yes. Perfect. And that's. And ex can you explain uh, what happens in that time frame that allows us to then repay the principal with our WIFIA funding and all that? Sure. So um, the intention, like Anthony suggested, is so that we have more time until we get uh, an idea of what we truly need as far as obligations with these projects. And the intention is that we would, at that point in time with fiscal year 26, look at retiring these debt certificates in order to fund that long-term funding mechanism that's going to help us with kind of that rate study and getting all of these moving parts kind of cemented down. And that's kind of the information we need in order to size the debt accordingly all the while right now we need to start funding for the uh, DuPage Water Commission transmission main. Correct. Design. So yeah. at one of the prior meetings we um, we passed the agreement then for the mm -hmm. second round of construction engineering so we are um, committed to some obligations financially with that. Got it. Okay. I'll also just mention that these are prepayable anytime. So mm -hmm. okay. while the maturity is in two years uh, if we decide that we're going for a long-term funding. Prior to that, we can take this out at any point. Is the um, the interest rate, I know you said monthly, it will be updated. Is that standard for this type of yes. note? 
Okay. Yeah, they're, they're typically, we had, of all the bids we received, uh, there was one that was fixed and the rest were reset monthly based on some index. Got it, okay. And, and I'm sorry, I may have missed it. Did you say what the index is? The SOFR rate, SOFR. So these funds are going to be primarily just engineering work? No, it would be for the construction of uh, the water main projects that we have scheduled for fiscal year 25. Um, so that's based off of the water main replacement schedule uh, constructed by EEI, and then the other portion of that would be for the engineering of that transmission line. And that's primarily still going after or controlling the water loss? The water main replacement program is um, attributed to the non-revenue water loss program. Okay, and then is it anticipated after these are paid off in two years that we're probably going to have to piggy bank or look at another option similar to this until we get to that point to where we're looking at 10 times more than 12 million? We'll know then, right? <laughs> we'll know once, we'll once know we do the more. rate study. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we'll know more as we get further along into these projects. Did you think as a finance director you would get this much into water? Never. Okay, just asking. <laughs> All right, any other questions? Motion to approve. Second. Okay, go ahead. Trustee Geyer? Yes. Trustee Sperman? Yes. Trustee Baumann? Yes. Trustee Marisek? Yes. Trustee Brzezowska? Yes. That carries 5 0. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Appreciate it. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, uh, item B tonight is a resolution 2024-013, uh, adopting the 2024 Kendall County Multi-Jurisdictional um, Hazard, Multi, sorry, Multi-Jurisdictional Multi-Hazard Mitigation Plan. Get it right. Director Wolf. Thank you, President Browley. So as you're aware, the village of Montgomery is located both in Kane and Kendall County. So Kendall County uh, is initiated a renewal of their five-year program. Uh, the uh, hazard mitigation uh, evaluates damage to life property uh, from natural and man-made events uh, that can be impacted uh, from, uh, can be impact to the county and participating jurisdictions. Also identifies projects and activities to reduce these damages before an event occurs. The hazard mitigation plan fulfills federal planning requirements uh, of the Stratford Act uh, as amended by the Disaster Mitigation Act of 2000 and the Disaster Recovery and Reform Act. Uh, the main benefit of updating the Hazard Mitigation Plan is that the participating jurisdictions uh, can remain or become eligible uh, to apply for and receive funds, federal funds, uh, from the Federal ha Hazard Mitigation Funds uh, to Im implement and uh, the mitigation actions identified in the plan. So in order for the Village of Montgomery, in essence, to be eligible for FEMA funding, uh, our projects have to be uh, as part of this plan that is being proposed tonight. Um, so one thing to clarify is that action items that are identified in the plan are not required uh, to be completed within the five-year term. They're just items that are identified and earmarked so that funding becomes available, uh, we can receive those funds. So just to give some context as uh, previous uh, years planning, uh, what was put into uh, the uh, hazard mitigation plan was the installation of the tornado siren uh, on Dixon Road, uh, flood warning systems that were uh, implemented for the Parkview Basin, and then the installation of the storm sewer in the ComEd right away uh, behind Bryan uh, lane. So just to give some examples of items that were included in the plan, some are still in progress. Um, some items that were in the previous plan were carried over. Uh, we'll continue on into the new plan. Uh, but anyway, uh, those are just some examples of what those consist of. So um, like I said, uh, this will go back to the county after the resolution is approved, hopefully. Uh, once all of the jurisdictions have submitted uh, their approved resolutions, then those will be submitted ultimately to uh, FEMA IEMA for approval, and then the actual physical adoption of the plan will take place. And then again, um, those items will be eligible for funding should there be funding available. So uh, if there's any questions from the board, I'm happy to answer them at this time. Motion to approve. 
Trustee Marisek? Yes. Trustee Brzozowska? Yes. Trustee Geyer? Yes. Trustee Sperling? Yes. Trustee Bauman? Yes. Carries 5-0. Thanks, Mark. All right, item C is approval of a PSA with the EI in the amount of 79932 for engineering uh, for the pavement management program update. Director Wolf. Thank you, President Bradley. So in 2014 and 2019, the village conducted a full pavement assessment uh, management study of 96 miles of roadway uh, that's owned and maintained by the village. Uh, the current five-year roadway maintenance plan was developed and implemented within the last year of the program to be constructed in 2025, fiscal year 26, in accordance with the pavement management strategy adopted by the village, an updated five-year management maintenance plan is needed for roadway maintenance to be constructed in the years 26 through, um, sorry, excuse me, 2026 through 2030. Additionally, the village's annual pavement management update for roads that will be resurfaced in 2025 will be presented to the board in early July. Uh, so as again, you had mentioned the PSA tonight with EEI is for $79,932, which is under the budgeted amount of $80,000. Um, and again, just to give some context, there are other items that will be evaluated uh, throughout the process of this um, uh, pavement management plan, such as uh, signage and street light locations uh, to be verified, uh, which will assist us with our GIS uh, data. So uh, if there's any questions from the board, I'll be happy to answer them at this time. And, and when did you say that was going to be? I'm trying to look at the timeline here. So the pavement management plan would take place this year. Got it. So December, start. January is when we're looking to get it back in front of us. That's what it looks like. It, I'll second. You had a motion over here. I have motion to approve. And I'll second. All right. Any other questions? Go ahead. Trustee Geyer. Yes. Trustee Sperling. Yes. Trustee Bauman. Yes. Trustee Marisek. Yes. Trustee Brzozowska. Yes. That carries 5 0. Thank you. All right. Item D is approval of a PSA with the EI in the amount of $259,954 for the All Cut and Orchard Road intersection improvements. Director Wolf. Thank you, President Brawley. So staff is recommending the approval of the PSA tonight uh, for the Ockett Road and Orchard Road intersection improvements for preliminary engineering, as well as preliminary engineering for the hydraulic modeling uh, and preliminary plans for Ockett Road and Griffin Road extensions, uh, including a bridge study uh, for proposed bridge over Blackberry Creek. Uh, this PSA will allow uh, the village to determine the type, size, location, uh, and location, excuse me, of the bridge, as well as uh, determine determine the, the compensatory storage and uh, detention requirements for the Ockett Road and Griffin Road extension. Uh, the PSA will also complete an IGA uh, and access, access agreement with King County Division of Transportation uh, for the Orchard Road corridor from Jericho Road to US Route 30. Uh, lastly, and uh, intersection design study will be completed uh, as Ockett Road and Orchard Road to determine uh, the proposed improvements at that intersection. Um, so if there's any questions from the board, uh, I am happy to answer them at this time. And just super high level, this is all of the groundwork that you need to do to get ready for somebody to actually build the bridge that goes over. I mean, it's not the final design, to, to, when you do the IDS for the intersection, what is it actually going to look like? I mean, this is us being very proactive with getting the Hammond site developed. The intent is to be able to set budgets, uh, realistic budgets, um, reduce the timeline that uh, would be needed for a future developer to move uh, if they wanted to build something, because there's going to be 12 to 18 months of review time at the county. So the sooner we can get this preliminary work done, the better. I think the other thing to keep in mind is the site, as I think everybody's aware, has a great deal of floodplain, and we want to be able to look at the entire site because you can't build things um, in the absence of knowing what else is happening. So when the bridge goes in, we have to do grading across the site to provide the compensatory storage. So you know it, it's just better to 
to understand where all that's going to fit so that when we are ready to move forward, when the developer's ready to move forward, we can move forward. Mm -hmm. So, and we're not working against ourselves mm -hmm. um, on certain elements. So the other, the other option that another community could take is to just wait for the developer or, or an end user to do all this work. So I think this is us being very proactive and trying to get that, because we know we prove via TIF, it's getting that developed as early in the TIF as possible helps fund all the public infrastructure that's going. So this cost is coming out of the TIF fund? Yes. Yes. And is there money in TIF number four? No, I think we'll be reimbursed right. when, when the development happens. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's being paid out of the general fund. There will be an obligation of TIF four to repay us then when there's TIF money available? Uh, so that currently would be paid out of TIF 4, but because TIF 4 and TIF 2 run congruently with one another, there is a possibility that we can use TIF 2 funding for it. Totally use TIF 2 funding for it? For the total project? Even though for the, it's engineering, the, other, for the engineering pieces only. That's the intent, is for the engineering pieces only. Because there's, because there's money in TIF 2? Is that the reason we're doing it? Then we'll tip right, and because these two TIF, tip two areas align with one another and they bump up right next to one another, it allows us. So then in the future, will TIF 4 reimburse TIF 2? We can look at that as an option. I don't think um, we've discussed that. Because this, this all point. pertains to TIF 4, right? I mean, it's really not going to impact TIF 2. Um, the improvement. I mean, the Alcott Road improvements, um, I, I think there's synergies between the two. <laughs> I think. The reality is that both TIFs, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong, the public infrastructure that's needed will far exceed the TIF revenue that we'll ever get, and this is um, a much smaller chunk of that. But yeah, we can split that up however is however our TIF attorney says that we're allowed to, um, to get this whole area to redevelop. We're this. doing improvements on the east side of Orchard right. through TIF 2 right now. So I mean, that's, that's coming out of TIF 2. Sure. Mm -hmm. That's part of the whole you know, regional basin project that we're going to have to redesign yeah. all that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I see that money coming out of TIF 2. I would think anything on the west side of town or on the west side of Orchard would then be TIF 4. I get it. Okay. And the developer doesn't re reimburse this money. We're, we're no, we're, this, is, this is really an economic development tool for us to try and get the, that site to develop earlier is that we would re reap those benefits when the development goes in and there's incentive, or there's an increment there to repay. Because absent that, the property owner's not funding this now. Right, at the end of the day too, they may ask for that anyway. Developer may come in and say, well, you know, we want to use TIF funds, right, to develop the yeah. intersection. So that's probably what would happen anyway. And the, the, the huge benefit here is the IDS and the uh, type, size, and location of the bridge, anything that has to go through the county, I don't know if the bridge does, uh, the, the, the route, the, sorry, the Orchard Road stuff will take considerable time to get permitted. So moved. Second. Right. Trustee Marisic. Yes. Trustee Brzezaska. Yes. Trustee Geyer. Yes. Trustee Sperling. Yes. Trustee Bauman. Yes. That carries five zero. Thank you, Pete. All right, uh, the last item for separate action this evening is actually first reading uh, of the revised uh, mailbox policy. Uh, I know Jeff strategically missed the meeting this evening, so he didn't have to be part of this, uh, but you do have a draft of the amendment. I don't know if anybody on staff had anything to add. The two things that I just wanted to cover is that um, staff did make an amend two amendments here. One is to, it's to set two thresholds. A $200 maximum if your mailbox is damaged by snow throw, and a $500 maximum if it's if it's struck by a vehicle or is, if we knocks your mailbox over with an actual um, plow or, or whatnot. Some type a of collision. collision. Yeah, I didn't want to say like it was actual one thing. Uh, that's the essence of the change, and the determination on the eligibility is made strictly by the village administrator. That's the draft. 
comments, questions, and discussion? I did want to add one other thing was just based on the board's prior discussion with the brick and the materials of the mailbox. Mm -hmm. It continues to reference the USPS standards, but it, so that is still the rule, but it takes out the specificity of outlining the prohibited materials. So it says you have to comply with USPS, but then it gives the administrator the discretion to waive that requirement as far as reimbursement goes. Um, so no, like if you had a prohibited material mailbox, you could still be eligible for reimbursement based on the board's direction last meeting. And that was gonna be one of my questions. Yeah, because the way I read yeah. it, it says, you know, it, it says what the support must be. And then it also states in here that um, a mailboxes that were not installed pursuant to the standards set forth in the ordinance are not eligible for reimbursement. So uh, it's, it's just kind of a little bit of a loophole. The, um, um, the one thing I did have a question on is uh, number five. It says the mailbox shall be securely attached to a support to prevent it from separating from the support if struck by a vehicle. I think we need to take that out because I don't want that. I don't want somebody's mailbox get hit. And we said, well, you know, wasn't support to the you know post so that we, you know. They don't manufacture a mailbox that you can hit with a vehicle and it's not gonna. Well, and I think that's the reason that the USPS doesn't authorize the brick right. is because if you hit a brick structured mailbox with your car, it's like hitting a wall. Right. They're, they're supposed to be designed to kind of like most of our signs in town, they break away. So that's where this is a little, <laughs> it's basically saying, no, you should put an I-beam in right. the ground four feet. <laughs> And secure your mailbox so it can't fall over. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Unless somebody feels like that is necessary, I don't think. I don't think we're we're not drafting this in a way that's like a gotcha, right? Trying to find loopholes in here that we can avoid doing this. I think it's from based on our conversation, at least where I sit, is just have a process that we know what happens, and item A here happens a lot with snow throw. Item B should be very, you know, infrequent. And it, but it does happen. Plowing our streets, safety on our roads is paramount at that time. And so it can happen, right? It shouldn't, but it can. And we just want to set that up so that folks have a process. That's all. And we're still going to have the same process where you inspect in the fall. And Correct. Notify people that, you know, if your mailbox gets knocked over, it's already in disrepair. Correct. I mean, that's our process that we aim for. It's not a process that we have as a set standard. Um, it's an internal process that we do. So again, it's a, based upon time allowed. Um, so we always target to, to complete that uh, pre-winter conditions uh, to try to get those notifications out. But again, that's not something that, um, you know, we, we could potentially fall short on that. But uh, yes, that's our intention. Yeah, that line five was was the thing. The other one also is uh, we had discussed, and I discussed this with Jeff too, so we were gonna make this retro back at the beginning of the year. Do we need to put that in the ordinance that says it's retro back to January 1st? Because we do have claims in right now that are waiting for us to pass this ordinance. I don't know that it, there's a date on it. No. I don't know that anything would, would prohibit. No, nothing would prohibit you from retroing it back. So we don't need it. Okay. It, it just, it's, because it's, it's a policy, right? Or it's an ordinance? It's an ordinance. It's an ordinance. It's an ordinance. Yeah. to people, so mm -hmm. certainly there's nothing that would prohibit you from being more favorable. Okay, perfect. Is that your question? That is all my questions. Because, okay. well, I had one that was the same. So uh, kind of along those lines, is there anything in this ordinance that says uh, how long they have to report it? I mean, have we had that issue in the past where somebody come, you know, comes in now and says, "Well, you know, at the last snow, you guys, you guys knocked it over." Um, you know, I mean, every case is different. Um, in most cases, they're relative to a snowplow event. You know, mm -hmm. within typically within a week, um, we have had some on instance where you know they've come in right at the end of the year and said, "Hey, this happened." Um, again, we typically go out do an evaluation. Uh, based upon that evaluation, we make a determination, which in most cases, um, you know, we'll look at it uh, and make a decision based upon whatever the evidence shows us. So, but it's pretty infrequent that that happens. Most of them, like I said, are very uh, typically next day. Uh, we're hearing, if not within the week. Okay.
Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Any objection to placing this on consent? Yes. For the next meeting? Well, because Steve's not here. I'll talk I know. to them. Okay. <laughs> I mean, if, if he's in agreement, then I'm yeah. fine with it. But with yeah. You like jumped at that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was like, all right. Well, I, said, I have no objection, and I will be at the next meeting. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, that's. I'll check with them. Okay. Sure. Thank you all. Appreciate it. All right, um, last, uh, we don't have anything for discussion, new or unfinished. I have one item. Uh, going back to our last meeting, so, I'm sorry, it's for Director Wolf. I thought I saw something that the flashing lights, the signs did go up. Could you talk about that? Correct, so we installed some flashing LEDs that are mounted to the existing school zone signs on Lakewood Creek, so you're gonna see them both on the uh, far north coming into the school zone and the far south uh, coming in. So those were uh, added last week. Um, as you know, it was mentioned in the board, then there was mm -hmm. concern uh, from the school as well as um, you know parents uh, of students as well as the village board. So those were installed. Uh, we're gonna evaluate those. Um, obviously those were considerably less. Again, right. as those are just a solar panel unit. Um, so substantially less than the original quote that we talked about, um, but those are mounted on the school zone crossing signs, not the pedestrian crossing signs, so. And is there a plan to put them up at the other two schools? Uh, we're evaluating that. We're doing some work in front of um, McDowell School. We're rearranging some sidewalk there, um, so potentially we can. Um, we have not had the same concerns, um, so again, um, those units are about $500 a piece, um, just for reference. So um, obviously we don't want to throw a ton of them up, but it, obviously at that cost, it's substantially more effective than the $20,000 a piece um, for the original quote signs that we got. So uh, we'll continue to evaluate that and, and potentially put those up. Uh, but that would likely happen after May 1st since this really wasn't a budget item. Not that it was technically budgeted in next year, um, but yes. Okay. Great, thank you. And that did Everybody remind me of something. Budget? I'm sorry? Covered by the sign budget? Correct, we had some funds available within the current fiscal year uh, in our sign um, funding line, so we were able to make it work. And I did have an opportunity to speak with um, Kelly Young, who's the HSO president, and she actually sent me some, we spoke. Um, I had actually just seen Mark at the IRP meeting, and they had just gone up that day. So she actually sent me some pictures the next day. Of Perfect, them. great. Because so, when I left, I turned right, so it was the back of it. I didn't see it. And I, I'm, I'm like, what sign is he talking about? And yeah, when I came back that night, they, they were flashing, and they're bright. Okay. They're very bright Perfect. lights, so. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah. yeah. So well, I, I have to be honest, crossing guard standing in the intersection with the stop sign, and people still hit them, <laughs> or almost run over the crossing guards, so I'm not sure, you know, people are still people, but yeah. we're making the effort to do the right thing. So, on uh, Concord, the uh, crosswalk there by the bridge mm -hmm. with the, uh, the lights, could you have someone check and make sure that is working? Because I've drove past her several times and there's people that's crossed. In one occasion, I could have swore the woman reached up and pushed the button, but those signs did not illuminate. Yeah, I could double check them. I mean, I was out there just a few weeks ago and they were working, but yeah, we'll definitely okay. check them again. Yeah, and then check also, you know how you have the sign that is a, is a warning that a crossing mm -hmm. is coming up. The one um, sign when you're heading towards uh, Galena, there's um, there's the mounts on the, the post, on the light post, but there's no sign there. Okay. So I don't know if the wind blew it or somebody decided to look good in their basement or what. Sure, we'll definitely check that. <laughs> happens all the time. Okay, thanks. Cool, anything else? Motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going someplace else with that yeah, second. I did yeah, too. You, could, yeah, you could have done so much more. All right, uh, there's been a motion and a second. Go ahead. Okay, Trustee Mirasek. Yes. Trustee Brzezaska. Yes. Trustee Geyer. Yes. Trustee Sperling. Yes. Trustee Bauman. Yes. Thank you. And we're adjourned. Thank you.